Good morning, National Park Church. We are so glad that you all are here for our class on Sunday morning. Last one of the Finding God Story in All Stories. Last one. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know I did. Yep. Um, Thank you for saying that. Yeah, no, I had to. <laughs> No, I think this, I, I feel like even with some people's feedback, it has been very uh, yep. a very good series. Speaking of that, Lana Shoemaker gets a gold star for us because we've been begging for responses, and she's been responding each week. Nice. So, yeah. Martin Johnson has too on YouTube. I don't do the Facebook. See, the, okay, I haven't checked the YouTube. So Martin Johnson's yeah. been okay, he, but he kind of likes to joke about us being like Harl and or Laurie and Harl, Harl or yeah, those old people. <laughs> Old people thing, but you know, kind of like uh, Abbott Costello, I guess. Okay, type, yeah, 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 yeah. Type who's on first, feeding that kind of other. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Or like twins, like I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger and you're Dean DeVito. Okay, <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I can't recover from that. No, but, but it's great. So I'm glad we we did it. It's the last class for this one, so we want a ton of feedback. Right? Ton of feedback. We're gonna keep begging. Yeah. We're not worried about begging. I would like to hear people's favorites. Yeah. What, That'd be cool. Thing, not favorites like what you liked, not the movie, but like what what did you really find the most in? Yep. Maybe even name a movie that man, I wouldn't have watched this otherwise, but I watched it. Maybe maybe there's a few yeah. people on there that yeah. did that. So uh, we do want to let you guys know that we're beginning a new class next week. Chad's committed to keep teaching with me. So our men's book club is doing a study on celebration of discipline by Richard Foster. We begin this Friday, and we thought it would be awesome. We have great conversations when we're together for us to then kind of synthesize that information and then share it with the whole church. But I would encourage you, if you want to get kind of dive deeply into that class, uh, go on Amazon and pick you up a copy and and follow along with us. Uh, We're really excited because we think it's going to be the kind of class that you literally not just take thoughts from it, but like we're going to have challenges where let's go do this together for the week. And so I think it's going to be an awesome class for us to to do together so go on amazon if you want to read this book by richard foster celebration of discipline uh, i think it's going to be worth worthwhile and it will help you engage with our our class a little bit more and i think did uh russ say was it this book that was also on the the audio for the the uh library or was it the other book it was the other book Uh, okay but i'm guessing you can find an audio version yeah check the hoopla Hoopla, yeah, Hoopla. is the is the library audiobook app. Mm-hmm. So, yep. So we're very excited about starting that next week. Uh, we're going to say a quick prayer, and then we're going to dive into uh, our lesson for this morning. A little bit different. We don't actually have a clip for this week. We're more doing a summary, uh, overview of maybe some major takeaways uh, in light of our series on finding God's story and all stories. So, you mind saying a quick prayer for us? Yeah. Um, dear Holy Father, thank you so much for another week. Um, thank you for um, all the things you have given us. Thank you for the chance that we get to watch this um, lesson online, uh, and really not even just that it's online, but that it's um, also you know on demand. And if anybody else wants to watch it, it's great. But just help us to learn from each other um, and from your words, as well as the words that are out there in um, in the world, and just find our place uh, with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So almost every week I've been mentioning uh, kind of what the the reason for doing this class is. And uh, the the goal has been, how can we take something that seems like a a thing that most of us do, right? So if if we took a poll of our congregation, I'm not saying everybody, but the majority of us watch TV, watch movies, spend some substantial amount of time in those areas. And so the, the goal has been, how can we how can we take as paul says every thought captive or how can we do everything for the glory of god even watching tv and so i'm wondering uh, when you heard passages like take every thought captive or do everything for the glory of god uh how did you understand those did you understand it as oh i could probably do that while i'm watching tv or i can do that in this other activity how, I guess for you, how was that experience growing up? When you heard those passages, what kind of came to mind? Well, um, because we're in this trust tree here, um, really, it, uh, it, it was always like, I mean, I separated it from, from being in the building and then being outside the building. Yep. And really, the thoughts captive in here were to try to keep all thoughts only on Jesus, God, uh, the New Testament. I mean, every single thing, these stories, that was my thought process here. And then when I left... Um, 
if it did great, but it wasn't it wasn't a part of it. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Kinda, Absolutely. It was very much um, not finding those thoughts outside these doors. Yeah. So I, for me, it's very similar that it was compartmentalized. So of course I can glorify God by saying a prayer. Right. I can glorify God by reading a, uh, my Bible. I can glorify God uh, or take every thought captive by um, singing some songs or doing like growing up, doing an event with the youth group. But if you would have asked me, is it possible to glorify God by watching a movie? I would have been like, ah, if it's the passion of the Christ, like if right. it's some spiritual, if it's veggie tales, I can probably do it that way. The Ten Commandments. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> Going old school. Yeah, old school, yeah. Yep. Uh, but I, I would have struggled to, to see how I could glorify God by doing this routine activity that I do on a regular basis where I flip on the TV. But I think scripture saying there should not be an area of your life where you cannot find a way to take that thought captive and you can't glorify God mm-hmm. through it. So maybe give us a little insight. How has maybe going through this study help you f- see that as an opportunity to encounter God rather than just this passive activity that you do that has no relationship to God? Well, it made me really want, uh, it, it has made me want to look for the stories. Yep. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it kind of goes back to like what you were saying, those verses and, it, you know, that verse that you had, we're going to say about that eat, you know, finding what is it, uh, whatever you eat and drink and when, whatever you do, yep. you know, we just think eat and drink. So outside these walls, we'll just do a blessing. Right. Right. But it's like whenever you do. And you know what? I feel like I, I noticed I'm speaking for myself, but I'm just going to kind of assume that we kind of are all we're all really in the same boat right. in life. Um, some do things better than others. But what I don't do good is give God the praise when my prayer is answered, right? Good or bad, yep. well, for me. Yep. So I I feel like um, I feel like we don't remember that you know once you pray for something and you it, it comes to fruition or whatever like that verse says whenever you do that we don't typically then stop and say you know what God thank you so much for guiding me in this direction to answer my prayers and. Um, but with that, I feel like, I feel like really not, not, not thinking that I'm supposed to find those stories yeah. out there. Like yeah. really, it, it, like we said, com- compartmentalize d- these doors and outside the doors. We also do that with music and movies either, yeah. you know, it's, it's K-Love and then the rest. Right. Or it's like you'd quote, you said those movies or non-Christian movies right. and, um, but most of those movies are made, especially when we were growing up, that didn't have the language or the you know adult sensory stuff. Were just stories. Right. It wasn't like they were not specific for God. Right. And um, really, what what I started thinking was Jesus did that. Yeah. Like like that was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you weren't here Sunday. I just heard the critters. <laughs> I just heard the critters. Yep. Um, but I, I was just wanting to say, you know, Jesus did parables. Right. And um, he, he didn't, you know, it wasn't like, I hope I'm not jumping too far down, but yep. I, I just remember he didn't say on the sowing the seeds, like there was a preacher or a rabbi or whatever. It yep. was literally this farmer yep. and this is what, or this is what was happening. Or, you know, everything was, was spoken in a real life situation, not there was a preacher at church who did this. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. And so when we're watching these things or listening to these yep. things, we can find those stories in there. Yep. Absolutely. And, and I think what we've talked about, um, like in preparation for this, one of the major requirements is a kind of spiritual attentiveness. So that I, I think, as we've said probably every week, when we go into sitting on the couch and we turn on that movie or we turn on that TV show, we just become very passive. And what this class hopefully has done is said, no, 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 you're an active, um, mm-hmm. attentive person watching this. So you're not just watching it saying like, oh, that's a, that was funny. That was cool. That was, you're asking, how might this show me something about the nature of God? Or how might this teach me about people? And so the better I understand people, the more I can look at how would I connect that person if they acted in that way to the story of God? It just, it requires a kind of intentionality that I think most of us assume uh, when I'm watching TV, I should not engage with. And so I would say being a Christian means that there is no space where I'm not spiritually attentive. So there's when it says, whatever I do, I do for the glory of God, 
It means I am actively uh, participating in that activity, whatever it is, if it's giving a bath to my kids, if it's uh, going to a sporting event, if it's going on a run, that doesn't mean that you have to transform that into some hyper spiritual moment, but it means that in every moment you're attentive to the, the fact that God can be present there and that we can see God's beautiful story in a multiplicity of ways. And I think the parables is a great example of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus uses things that would be familiar for us to say, yeah, but you, if you look a little bit deeper and if you look with a little bit more intentionality, you'll see that this gives us a little minor glimpse of the, of, uh, who God is or what God's up to or how God works in the world. But he doesn't do that by, as you're naming, just making some, well, these are spiritual stories. Like they're stories people would know of workers in a field. They're stories of a father and sons and these things that would be, could be used in any and every situation that Jesus intentionally makes a spiritual application. And I think that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I know both of us have recently watched the documentary, and I watched it because you've you've been hounding me about paying attention to this the social dilemma, which is on Netflix. Um, and I think it's important because we just brought up the word spiritual attention, but that documentary reveals how we can't just assume that we have attention all the time that our that our attention is often we're distracted and we're yeah. we're not able to be attentive because everybody's trying to grab at it. Can you speak a, maybe a little bit about how? that creates an even more urgency to be attentive since maybe our attention is being pulled in so many different directions. Yeah. I, I mean, if you think about, if, if you think about if you're sitting throughout the day, the, the time you wake up to the time you finally go to bed, how much constant something's going on, yeah. whether it be you're working, you're, there's music, there's TV on, there's always something. And, you know, unless we just sit and be still something is grabbing our attention that could be a positive light or a negative light. Right. And, um, you know, it, it, we are the, we are right now, and I, you could argue this every year it happens, but right now we are by far the most marketed to, um, generation ever. Yep. Now you can say, well, of course, Chad, because there's more, you know, media outlets or mediums or whatever you want right. to say. And that, but that's the, that's what happens. I yep. mean, we are, there is stuff out there all the time from, yep. You know, people freaking out about, is our phones listening to us? Right. When we talk about, I want to get a hammer at Lowe's, and then all of a sudden you're scrolling on Facebook or Instagram and an ad pops up that's right. from Lowe's with a hammer on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, those things are real. And yeah. we don't, we might just scroll and thinking they're not real, but it, something's trying to grab our attention. And it's either something that's good or bad. And like what you had said about watching those movies, you know, I feel like sometimes what we what we've done is we sit there and think I'm gonna veg out. Yep. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna put it put a show on, and I'm gonna watch it. But I but it helps me just like not think. Right. But that's not what's going on. No. We are being lied to ourselves, thinking that that's what's happening. Yep. Whatever we're watching is then has our attention. Yeah. And you know, unless like you said, we sit there with an intentionality of guiding, like. Hey, I want to watch this show or this movie, and I hope I find something cool that would help me inspire me into it. Then it, something else is going to grab our attention, yep. and it's we think that it's just attention deficit disorder and you know all that that stuff, but there's just something always grabbing us. I mean, I wake up in the morning, and and like I'd said that you know about the uh, making sure God's first and everything, right. not just your tithe, but like when you wake up, like my friend Alex, he would specifically get up, read his Bible, say his prayer. Well. When I've done that to prepare for our book studies, it's worked out great. Right. There have been times where I've gotten up, started to making the coffee, and then thought I'll check emails. And I don't even have a job, and I'm getting emails. Yep. And every time I look at those emails, it might make me think, man, I really would like to, you know, see what's happening at Redbox. Yep. You know, or something. Yep. Instead of, wait, I'm supposed to be reading this book and all that stuff. So I hope that's what you're kind of wanting to say is that we're always, something's always going to grab our attention. And unless we are really disciplined to try to say, I, I want to just take a break and, and in silence and in a meditation standpoint of, let me just clear it all out. Right. I'm rambling. It's probably no. not what you were thinking, but no. that's just what I, 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 if, if, if you don't think that something's grabbing your attention constantly, you're in denial. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I, I think that's so right that, uh, there is no f- purely passive state where, 
nothing I'm there's nothing trying to grab my attention that I can just be in this neutral place where I'm inattentive completely. Like you're always gravitating towards something. And what's really interesting is you're always ingesting ways of viewing the world, ways of understanding things. Even if you think, well, oh, that's not affecting me at all. Like if I'm not intentional about how I interpret something that's happening to me, like I'm just receiving it as, oh, well, that didn't make a difference to me, but it actually is shaping the way I view the world, the way I view people. Whereas if I'm spiritually attentive in that situation, then I can take captive that thought and say, well, in light of my belief in Christ, how should I think about what I just saw? And I know a lot of times that was used as a scare tactic of Christians should um, always just criticize culture, always criticize entertainment. And that's Mm -hmm. not what I'm talking about. But I do think that uh, we're receiving information at a rapid rate that is uh, unprecedented right. in history. Uh, and so that means that we have a responsibility even more now to say, I'm not going to just passively or think that I'm passively receiving the, this information, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be active in taking this thought captive. You know, I was going to say, uh, if you don't mind. Just, yeah, absolutely. Um, a great example <clears throat> is, uh, you know, we, we, me and Megan just watched this uh, a, a couple of like this marriage conference thing. And one of the things was, you know, there's a lot of things that are harmless that God has created, or we have that's harmless that the devil makes uh, evil or bad. Right. I can't remember what the word was, but this is an example. And I'm not trying to get anybody upset, but this is just a great example. So for instance, with this attention grabbing thing, we all have the U vision Bible app. Yep. Awesome app. It has, I forgot the stat, I just heard how many people it has reached that didn't have a translation or a Bible in general. Um, It's incredible. We use it every day to do our Bible reading plans. Verse of the day pops up. Everything's incredible about it. But what if you use it while you're preaching and you got the app up? Cool, I didn't have to read my Bible, but I got the words here. No big deal. Well, ESPN thing pops up, you know, for instance, right now. Flip it popped up. Target was in a car accident. Well, are you going to then attention grab you? Click on that. Then all of a sudden you're kind of not into what we're doing here and worshiping God and stuff. And I've been, I've done it. So I'm not saying I haven't done it, but I've now trying to read my work, my paper Bible. And I, again, it's not that that app's bad, but from the standpoint of what we're trying to talk about here is something that's grabbing our attention constantly. That's a great example of, of using something that can just, you're, you're really reading the word and all of a sudden it's like, Oh wait, what's that up there? Yep. Yep. So, I think that's exactly right. If you don't think your attention's not trying to get grabbed, that's a that's happening too. Yeah, all constantly. And I also think there's in scripture uh a call by Jesus to pay attention to things that we might not ordinarily think can reveal God to us, but they do. So think of Matthew chapter six. Uh Jesus is trying to convince uh his disciples, but also us, not to be anxious about anything. And he could go to like I'm going to go to this Bible verse in the Old Testament. What does he do? He says, pay attention to birds. Pay attention to flowers. Look at them. And you, you, the spiritual application he makes is, if God loves them enough to take care of them and make sure they're clothed and make sure they're fed, do you think he's not going to care about us? Which is amazing, right? Because what Jesus is saying is, this protection of God, God caring for his creation is all over the place. And you inhabit the world and I inhabit the world and and we just miss it constantly because we're not paying attention to it. And so isn't it fascinating that Jesus says, I want you to see something about God and the way I'm going to do that is say, slow down. Mm -hmm. Look at a bird. It's like, well, I see birds all the time. right? But he's like, no, no, look at that bird. If God's going to take care of that bird and this flower over here, look at this flower. It's so beautiful. It's it's clothed in beauty. Do you not think God's going to give you those things that he's not going to take care of you? And I think what that is, is Jesus is saying, be attentive to everything around you because you're going to be hard pressed to find a space where you cannot see the beauty of God, the gifts of God, the the reality of God, if you're paying attention to it. But Jesus is also using a specific filter. He's not just saying, look at birds, but he's looking at birds in light of the fact that birds are created by God. And in light of that being his filter, he can now say, my attention is. My, and I'm using the phrase spiritual attention allows me to see something beautiful about God in something as simple as looking at a bird. And I wonder how your day would change and my day would change 
if I went through every moment saying, I'm going to be looking with that kind of intentionality. What does this car ride teach me about God? What did my kid laughing teach me about God? What does washing the dishes teach? Like, how can I be spiritually attentive in all of those spaces? And so one of the examples that we've been working on is, how can we do that in something that's such a common activity today, like watching TV or watching movies? So I want to transition now. We've, we've talked about individually, how do we do this? But as I've been reflecting upon it, when we have a Bible class on this, it seems pretty natural to say, hey, we watch Les Mis, or hey, we watch um, The Greatest Showman, or we watch uh, Shawshank Redemption, and then we talk about spiritual applications. But I'll be honest, if one of you guys came over to my house and we watched a movie on Friday night, it would feel a little bit awkward to just jump right in and have the kind of conversations that you and I have been having the past few weeks. Can you tell me why you think that is and maybe even suggest how we might move where this becomes more common to be able to make these applications without it feeling like, oh, you're trying to be super spiritual? I mean, I think that um, I think we have to get over the it's just awkward. I mean, um, it's funny how we as a human race and our brains work, that we ha- we define what's awkward, not awkward. And it's all individually opinionated. Like, yep. you know, some people don't find that awkward. Right. And some people do. Yep. <clears throat> and um, until we get over the, 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 we think we're harming the situation by bringing that up, yep. then we won't be able to change. Right. And um, I, I I don't do it. I haven't yet. I, I, now that we have talked about this, right. I really want to do that more. Um, and it kind of links. It, it doesn't have to be anything big. It, it doesn't have to be like this. Did you see Jesus? Right. In that <laughs> part right there. It could yeah. be simple as like when Megan watched Shawshank. If we're just watching Shawshank with somebody, to just kind of be like, man, did that just reminds me of Joseph's story in the Bible? Isn't right. that crazy? And yep. then maybe they say, what What do you mean by that? And then you just explain it. That's yep. it. Yep. You don't have to say then have a you know have a calling for coming forward and yep. all that stuff. It's just a conversation yep. of. You know, you know, Joseph was in the Bible, and this is what happened, and this is kind of the same exact scenario, or any of the other movies we've used. Right. And with all that, though, we have to be really intentional. And you always say the word intentional, just like journey. But it's so, it's so true. Like we have to go into it thinking if 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 that pops into my head, I need to say it right about that. Yep. And you know, and and maybe it's the first time we do it, it's a little awkward. Maybe the next time it's easier, yep. or you know, maybe the people think you're annoying and you don't watch a movie with them again. Right. Yep. Um, but I just think saying those things is what God wants us to do. Yep. Um, for one, they're positive. Right. You know, we're not sitting here writing on Rotten Tomatoes, you know, ripping the movie, right. a new one. Yep. It's just literally just saying, this is something very positive I found. And there's, why do we think we can say something negative about a movie yep. and people will be like, I agree with you or don't agree with you. I mean, think about it. Right. If I say I didn't like Les Mis, Yep. And you would say, well, I, I liked it. And yep. We can talk. We don't not become friends. Right. But what we think in our heads, if I say, did you see this part in Les Mis? It was kind of a good redemption story, whatever. Right. You're not going to be like, not friends with you anymore. Yeah. But you found something <laughs> positive in this movie. Right. So I don't know why our brains are wired that yep. way. And I think it's the devil. Yep. I mean, I think he's in there. Yep. Um, I hope that kind of talks yep. about what it's, you're thinking. Because it's interesting, uh, kind of a running joke here is that uh, I'll reference the office in any and every situation. So if someone's telling, "Hey, our Should kids, we off? <laughs> yeah, our, our kids were doing this last night," I'm like, "Oh, that kind of reminds me of an episode mm-hmm. of The Office," and it's not weird at all. Like maybe some people get annoyed by right. it, but nobody's like, "Oh, why would you try to connect it to The Office?" But I, I think if we become more comfortable, it shouldn't be weird to say, "Man, that's a cool redemption story." And of course, when we think about redemption stories, we think about the ultimate redemption story. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to do preachy, and it doesn't have to be like a class. But I think um, one of the coolest things that, and this is a long time ago, but John Mulliken, who came to help us with our vision process, mm-hmm. uh, when he met with the staff and the elders, one of the things he suggested that we do is we ask the question to kind of begin, where have you seen God most clearly recently? And it's really awkward when you first go like, well, what do I say? How do I... But what I think John was getting at is he was training us to say, be looking for God to show up. Because a lot of times we don't see him because we're never looking for him. And I think it's still probably awkward. Well, on a Friday night, could I really tell Chad, I've seen God here recently. Or I saw, because that's basically what we're doing. I saw God in that movie we watched together. 
or you broaden it out to something else like I've really seen God in this person at church recently or in this event that's happening. And I actually think that's one of the really important things that our church can capture is that doesn't need to be awkward. Mm -hmm. Why, why is it? And I think your point is very profound that all of us could sit on a Friday night going, aren't you kind of, shouldn't church be doing this? Right. Like this is disappointing. Why, why aren't we doing this? Or why was this said? Or why was, and that doesn't feel awkward at all. But it feels a little bit strange for us to say, isn't this really awesome what God's doing here? And it, I, I do think you're right that we are trained to think that negative is something that we can talk about, but positive is something that um, you're going to get shunned for because you're going to be, oh, you, you're trying to sound super spiritual. But how cool would it be if we had a community of people that were regularly paying attention so that we could encourage one another saying, I saw God in this place, or I saw God when I was watching this, or I saw God in this action, or I saw God in this bird. Like, I think that would be a pretty incredible thing. And I think it's probably because, you know, when you speak positive about something, people just automatically assume, oh, you're better than that, instead of like, it's so messed up how we think that way. But until we all acknowledge that every single one of us is has sinned and has fallen short of getting the, receiving that Jesus died for us, yep. um, until we admit and know that every single person that sits out here has the exact same sins, has the same struggles as me, and whatever they say, I can take it. I can take advice from them because they might know more than me on something. Yep. And what we do is we just think, well, if I say something positive about this, well, I kind of got to back it up yep. in my life or by my words. And until we realize that that's not the case, um, I don't think we'll we'll be able to get there. To yep. be honest with you, but but we can negative talk because we're not there. Right. So let's just negative and, and and talk about it. You know, we could. Coming back to that story, because remember, he also asked us as our vision team group that same question. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, that was really right after um, this had happened, this situation I'm talking about. But what popped in my head immediately that, that day was that when um, little Esner walked in for the first time and everybody stood up and clapped. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the coolest experiences I ever had in church. Right. And um, like almost tears, like such a sweet, like the love, every single person's love was great. Yeah. And why can't I go share that out there? But I can share, you might like our church, but we don't have instruments. Yep. Like we have to just kind of knock it a little bit instead yep. of like, come see, this is what happened. Isn't this yep. awesome? Yep. Why do we lead with the negative, not with the positive? Yep. So I think that I think that would be one very practical way for us to move into how do we take every thought captive? Well, ask the question, where have I seen God? And and then train yourself to be more attentive to that. Because mm -hmm. it may be it's like anything when we're trying something new. At first, it may feel really hard or you do the very obvious thing. Well, I saw God and, you know, Chad helped an old lady walk across the street. But maybe by doing that every day for a year, you're able to say something that seems really uh, minuscule, uh, but you're so attentive that even small things, you're able to see the beauty of mm -hmm. God in those. And so I would say, if you want to take every thought captive, you're going to have to have a kind of a, a question that's going uh, on in your mind pretty regularly. And one of those questions can be, where am I going to see God? How could I see God in whatever I'm doing? But be prepared because now we don't have any excuses. You know, you, we always have that excuse of, I can't teach because I don't know the verses and where they are. Yeah. Or I don't want to talk to someone about baptism because I don't know where all the verses yeah. are or I'm prepared for their defense. But there's no excuse on this one because now you watch a movie and you can say, that reminds me of Joseph because yeah. you know it. Yep. Yeah. And then you can just say, here's where it was and here's the story. You yeah. don't have to be like, Let's open our Bibles and let right. me find the verse. I don't know. I won't be yep. embarrassed. You're just mentioning something that you've heard in the Bible. Yeah. I, I, and I don't know if you meant to do this, but it was a perfect segue into the next question. Because I want us to, as we're moving to the end, this also makes a difference to how we reach out to people. And I know this is going to sound so obvious, but sometimes we forget it. I'm probably not with the majority of people who are not interested in Jesus at this point going to be able to say, hey, um, we've been friends for a little bit. How about you come over to my house and have a Bible study? And that being the immediate first uh, move that I can make with somebody. But I probably can have a conversation with them about movies and TV shows. And the more I'm attuned to the story of Jesus and to being spiritually attentive to these things, I might be able to uh, to make a connection for them that they would otherwise say, oh, I didn't know Christians, because I've heard this before. I didn't know Christians could watch that. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't know that Christians could um, 
still be spiritual and have some understanding of what happens outside the church walls. Like that, that's a very regular um, kind of refrain is, oh, you like that too? Oh, you, you do that as well? Not saying that we're doing terrible things, but I think there's an assumption for many people outside the church that Christians have no uh, connection with the, the world that most people inhabit. And the more we can inhabit that in a way that looks like Jesus and thinks like Jesus, I think that can be a really good witnessing opportunity. Anything you can think of that might be able to connect in that space? Um, I was just going to say, uh, I will say this. I think that there's, that, uh, this is why I know that this works, what yep. you're saying and using these stories that are, that are, it's just weird saying secular stories, but these stories that are outside of the box of what we yep. think. Um, a, a church that I know that does this, the, the preacher says that this is the time when he, he tells his congregation to bring a friend to that hmm. church service yep. to do, uh, bring a friend, just bring a friend, tell them, just tell them to come visit. Cause the, they found that more people come out of it, either joining or ch- giving their life to Jesus after this type of a series mm. than any other one. That's cool. And it's kind of wild to know that you, you, you're hitting it on the, on the head about, <clears throat> um, we're, we're bridging the gap. That's a good way it's to no it. longer the, the, this church and then the parking lot in the world outside. We're now all the same person and we're all fallen and we're trying to all connect. Yep. And you can't connect with someone being like holier than thou spiritual and then not, yep. you're not going to connect to them. They're, they're going to typically kind of push you away or, or you're not even going to hang out with them right? because you're holier than thou. Yep. And so using these things that, that, um, that, that if we look into them and try to find something positive, um, can really connect uh, more people. Absolutely. And, and I would say um, the biblical story that I would connect this to, to say, we're not just making this up. Like this is not some modern invention that Chad and I are coming to say, well, the Bible's not sufficient. So we want to use something else as a means to connect people in the Bible in Acts chapter 17, Paul's famous uh, discussion in Athens when he's meeting with these philosophers, he quotes their poets. Like that is to us, we're like poets. That's that doesn't seem very relevant to us today. But that's the equivalent of us being able to be attuned to what's happening in the entertainment world. Mm-hmm. Us being able to apply something we've saw, seen on TV or a movie to um, the story of Christ and the story of uh, what God's doing in the world is the same kind of thing as Paul going. Hey, let me tell you about this unknown God. And then, oh yeah, you know, one of your poets says this about how uh, in in God we move and have our being. Uh, that's, let me tell you about who that's actually referring to. That's him just using what is well known in the culture for the purpose of bringing, and I love that phrase, bridging the gap with somebody who otherwise would be deeply intimidated by the Christian faith. So I might be able to share the same exact thing that Paul talks about in Romans, if I say, hey, there's this beautiful thing that re- reveals that we're all very broken. Like that movie scene just showed us in a clear way that humanity is just broken. Like we need help. And that person goes, yeah, absolutely. Like I very much identified with that character. And you're saying the same thing as Paul saying, we've all fallen short of the glory of God um, and we're all going to die. Like Romans three twenty three. Um, and so I, I think that's a really helpful thing is, even the earliest, and I would say maybe the Christianity's greatest evangelist, was well versed in the the culture of his time to be able to know how can I make cult- uh, contact with a community that not isn't necessarily receptive immediately to the gospel. And so I think thinking of training yourself to be able to see God's story in all stories is going to help you make those um, connecting moments and bridging the gap a little bit more faithfully. Yeah, because I think we need to forget, you know. Until we uh, break, like I keep saying a lot of stuff, I feel like, but it seems like it's a common thing of, of breaking this this thought process that we have that we really have got to break. And one of them is, like you're talking about the, the Paul story, you know, it wasn't, like, we don't need to think about the all the New Testament times of being this, like, everything was holy, but there was, like, a little bit of weird stuff going on. I mean, it was just like now. I mean, it was, there was stuff going on, you know, people out there. You know, prostitution, rob, robbery, murderers, thieves, you know, adulteresses, adulterers, like <laughs> widowers, people not taking care of them. Like all this stuff was going on then. And it wasn't like we don't need to think of the New Testament was just like 
perfect time kind of where Christians just started flourishing. It right. was a hard time. Yep. And they were they were having to connect, which is why the parables are so cool. You know, that the whole bride's made bride's groom story yep. like all these things were not right. you know a rabbi uh you know in david's time did this it was like this is stuff that can connect you and yep. until we realize until we stop changing like, like i mean lining up church and non-church in everything it'll be easier to do yep. and what made me think when you were talking about this was kind of like the tortoise and the hare story was that aesop it's an aesop fable i don't know but, but I know. yeah this person is writing a book that you would say, since it wasn't written in this, yep. is not a Christian book. Yep. <laughs> but bloopers, bloopers. <laughs> but um, but really, it can be compared to like Paul saying, you know, or whoever wrote Hebrews, um, the you know, persevere, run the race, yep. keep going, and, and and that person wasn't writing it thinking, I'm gonna I'm gonna connect this to you know Hebrews and some of the Christian views or whatnot. Right. Um, more than likely they were just writing a story that yep. they thought someone would find um, learning. And yep. just because they didn't write it inside of a church building does not mean it's not something that we can't read or connect to Jesus. Absolutely, really. absolutely. And I, I think what we see is uh, that's when my own study in Scripture, my own t- like when we come as a church and we gather together, we're building the, the tools and the knowledge of who God is and we're immersing ourselves within the Scripture not just merely so we can merely go out and regurgitate that, but we've been so formed by that so we can be like Paul who knew the Old Testament backwards and forwards. Like mm-hmm. He was trained in that way so that when he's making a connection, he's saying something true. When he's using their poet, he's saying something true because he knows the truth that he's already seen in Scripture without feeling like he has to quote it for it to, to be true because he knows the truth of Scripture. He's then able to use something outside of Scripture in a way that's going to be faithful to what God wants for us. That's one of your reasons for reading your Bible. One of your reasons for knowing the Bible is so that you don't have to only quote a Bible verse. Or you don't have to be sitting there going, well, um, turn with me to Acts chapter 15. You, so that if you know your Bible well enough and you know God well enough, you're going to be able to, to almost second nature, be able to make connections that are not where you feel like you have to have your nose in the Bible. Because you've spent so much time already studying the scriptures and they've... They've, you've immersed yourself in them. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like uh, it, we don't need to. Uh, it, that's why the the Bible and the Holy Spirit are working hand in hand in us. You know, yep. if we didn't, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, well, maybe we need we need to memorize it every single one of them. Yep. But we have all this inside of us and yep. using this as a tool. And I'm glad you said that because I thought, you know, it's all these stories had redemption in them, yep. which is what the whole New Testament it, it, Jesus were redeemed by Him. Yep. And uh, but. It doesn't, what I learned the most in this was it, it doesn't mean that we can't, we don't have to work at something. Right. We can't just be passive about it. We have to pray. We have to listen. We have to read read the scriptures. And we just have to just keep being in it so that when we're out there, we're in it watching their view. We're not comparing now out here's view to view. We're comparing our view all the time. Right. Yep, absolutely. And and I think what's really cool is it doesn't put the Bible in competition with these other things. It's my understanding of Scripture and my understanding mm-hmm. of the God who is, lives in me, the Spirit. I think that's a, a really important application. You're not doing this alone. Uh, but that in knowing that, I can watch these things, and with somebody else who doesn't read their Bible, I can still make spiritual applications to them because— I, I'm so informed by this that when I watch The Office, when I watch a movie, I can't help but see Christ in it. And then when I'm trying to engage with somebody who's not in the church, um, my connecting point is not going to be the biblical text immediately, even though it is the biblical text that's informing what mm-hmm. I'm saying about that TV show or about that um, about that movie. And I think that's really helpful for us, especially because we can mourn this fact and we can be discouraged by this fact. But you and I don't live in a, a highly Christian culture anymore. And I don't mean that like everything's bad. I mean, there was a time in our, our country's life where a lot of Bible stories would have been familiar even to people who didn't. Mm-hmm. But now the Bible stories aren't even familiar to a lot of Christians. And so if we're going to reach out to a, a culture that isn't immersed within the biblical stories, we're going to have to find contact points that are outside of Scripture 
uh, to then bring people in to then want to to know what's in here. And, and I think we just have to own that fact that we're probably not that it's never going to happen, but we're not we're not in a culture where it's going to be really easy to say, knock on someone's door and say, hey, you want to have a Bible study with me or knock on someone's door and refer to Jesus. And then they have this really big picture of what his life was like and what he did. Like we're just moving away from that as a culture, which means that we're going to have to be more strategic and creative in how we make contact points with people. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, it's not that it's not that we're wanting people to go watch, to go find every movie, the dirtier, the better to find God yep. ways. Stay away from that. Yep. It's not that it's just, if we're already doing it, <clears throat> let's find something in it. And Absolutely. it doesn't have to be a movie. Again, this was just a movie they series, but it's literally anything outside of <clears throat> our Sunday worship. Where yep. are we going to find it? Are, are we going to find it in you let someone in the, the line, um, let them in instead of you know, honking your horn and them getting mad because they're trying to nudge up in front of you in traffic. Yep. Let them in. Yep. You know, finding these these things constantly is really the point Absolutely. of all this. So Absolutely. Don't focus on just movies and, and yep. now getting on a, ra- a you know rabbit trail of let me find let me get Pulp Fiction and find yeah. <laughs> like, nothing like that. It's yep. just it's just if, if you're watching a movie or you listen to a song, just just. Try to be present and think, you know, is God talking me through this or does, or, or what good can I find in this that I can connect with other people? With? Absolutely. Well, we're so thankful that you guys have joined us for this study. Um, I, I think it's ramble too much today. No, we, I... no, no, no. I think. <laughs> Did I throw you for a loop for that? Yeah. With that com- conversation, man. That's what this is. Yeah. <laughs> you did great today, Chad. Oh, thank you. Um, but we're, we're just thankful that you've joined us with this, uh, yeah. You guys have a ton of things to teach us, um, but I, I, I think it should be something exciting. Spiritual attention in our daily life is going to bring God, I think, closer to us and a realization that he is already present uh, in so many of the situations in life where I assume that God is absent or I don't even have a thought about him. And I, I think that's a, a goal for ours is uh, we don't have to convince God to be present in our lives one of our main tasks is, are we going to be more attentive to his presence that is all around us? And so this was one way, and we hope you continue uh, to seek that out and everything. Appreciate you guys Absolutely. joining us this Sunday morning, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, next week. Love you guys. Love you guys.